Nobody was quite sure how Crow was born. Different stories were told. Out under the sun stands a body. It is growth of the solid world. It is part of the world's earthen wall. The earth's plants, such as the genitals and the flowerless navel, live in its crevices. Also, some of earth's creatures, such as the mouth. All are rooted in earth, or eat earth, earthy, thickening the wall. Only there is a doorway in the wall, a black doorway, the eye's pupil. Through that doorway came Crow. Flying from sun to sun, he found this home. Looking close in the evil mirror, Crow saw mistings of civilizations, towers, gardens, battles. He wiped the glass. But there came mistings of skyscrapers, webs of cities, steaming the glass. He wiped it. There came spread of swamp ferns fronded on the mistings, a trickling spider. He wiped he peered for a glimpse of the usual grinning face. But it was no good. He was breathing too heavy and too hot. And space was too cold. And here came the misty ballerinas, the burning gulfs, the hanging gardens. It was eerie. Crow looked at the world, mountainously heaped. He looked at the heavens littering away beyond every limit. He looked in front of his feet at the little stream, chugging on like an auxiliary motor, fastened to this infinite engine. He imagined the whole engineering of its assembly, repairs and maintenance, and felt hopeless. He plucked grass heads and gazed into them, waiting for first instructions. He studied a stone from a stream. He found a dead mole, and slowly he took it apart, then stared at the gobbets, feeling helpless. He walked. He walked, letting the translucent, starry spaces blow in his ear cluelessly. Yet the prophecy inside him, like a grimace, was, I will measure it all and own it all, and I will be inside it as inside my own laughter, and not staring out at it through walls of my eyes' cold quarantine, from a buried cell of bloody blackness. This prophecy was inside him, like a steel spring slowly rending the vital fibers 